Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 2101 that says detonate the maximum bombs. So guys this question is very well defined in terms of problem description and this problem de description will itself help you to derive the intuition. So it is one of the good problem with a very well defined description. So yeah guys stick to that and watch the complete video. So here you will be given a list of bombs and also with a range. So a range of a bomb is defined as the area where its impact or effect can be felt. So this range can be uh, displayed in the circular shape where center is the location of the bomb. Okay. So for an example if this is the bomb then its range can be this, this whole circle. So you would be given one 2D integer array where bombs of I represent the X coordinate, the Y coordinate as well as the range R. So R is nothing but the radius or uh, or this thing, this is R and with the help of R you can find the complete range uh, under which the bomb effect can be felt. Now you may choose to detonate a single bomb. See you can only detonate a single bomb. So detonate is something like diffuse a bomb, right? So you can choose to detonate a single bomb. When a bomb is detonated, it will detonate all the bombs that lie in its range, okay? These bombs will further detonate the bombs that lie in their range. So what is this thing? This is very important part of the question. So let's say uh, this is one bomb and this is the one range. Okay. Uh, let's let me sup let's suppose that there is one another bomb and the range of this bomb is this. There is one another there are another two bombs that are uh, in the range of this bomb. So guys, let's suppose that if you try to detonate this bomb, okay, then it will detonate all the bombs in its range right so let's say you detonated this bomb now inside this range there is one another bomb okay so you it will detonate this bomb also now further this bomb will further detonate bombs that lie in the range so this bomb uh, let's say from here it you detonated this bomb now from this it will detonate these two bombs also because that lie in the range so this keeps on going right this keeps on going until you can detonate all the bombs so you detonate bomb one so inside this bomb one, uh, there are like let's say bomb two, bomb three in the range. Okay. Now further in bomb uh, range of bomb two, there are another bomb, bomb four, bomb five. So when you will detonate this bomb, you will also detonate this two bomb. Now when you will detonate bomb two, you will also detonate bomb four and five. So this is the meaning of this line that when you detonate a single bomb, the bomb uh, all the bombs that lie in this range will also get detonated. Further the bombs will Further, all the bombs that lie in this range will also get detonated. So yeah guys, at the end we need to return the maximum number of bombs that can be detonated if we are allowed to detonate only one bomb. So we will start with one bomb and try to detonate maximum number of bombs possible. So we have to optimally choose the first bomb, right? Then only we can get the maximum number of bombs that we can detonate. We need to return maximum number of bombs to detonate and we can only choose one bomb, right? So yeah, we have to optimally choose the first bomb in order to get uh, the maximum answer. Okay. So guys, if you take a look at the first example here, so here there is one, uh, there are two bombs given. So this is one in the green and one in the purple. Now guys, uh, here we have choices. We, I can either detonate this green bomb or this purple bomb. So for an example, if you detonate this green bomb, then how many are the maximum bombs you can detonate? You can only would be able to detonate one bomb that is the green bomb itself because no other bomb lies in the boundary lies in this boundary no other bombs are there that lies inside the ranges of this green bomb now for the second choice for an example let's say you detonated this bomb okay the blue one so that means you detonate one bomb plus there is one another bomb that lie inside or that lie uh, on the range of this bomb see this when you will detonate these it will also detonate this bomb, this green one. Okay, so two bombs will be detonated in this condition. So yeah, guys, that's why we written output as two as uh, two is the maximum number of bombs that we can detonate in this given example. So as you can see that if we would have ch chosen the first bomb efficiently, then we we could have find out the maximum number of bombs. So yeah, if we would have chosen this bomb, then yeah, we can definitely get uh, two as our answer, and that is the best possible answer here. Now if you take a look in the second example, it is clearly visible that uh, both the bombs are separated by some distance and yeah, at a time you would be able to only detonate one bomb. Now let's take a look at this third example. So here 
uh, there are let's there are zero one two three four so total five bombs are uh, present and yeah so for an example let's say you started with this red bomb uh, marked with zero so inside this uh, bomb range how many other bombs are there there is one bomb one and another bomb two okay now if you see that inside the range of this bomb two there is one another bomb bomb three okay got it and inside the range of this bomb three there is one another bomb bomb four so if you start with a bomb zero you would be able to defuse one two three and four all the other four bombs so yeah uh, choosing the bomb zero is the best uh, possible answer will give you best possible answer and that would be nothing but five so all the five bombs you would be able to detonate in this situation so i hope you guys have now somewhat understanding of what we are trying to do here we are simply trying to choose the first bomb optimally uh, in such a way that it results it results in the maximum number of bombs right in the output so uh, again revising that what we are doing here we are trying to detonate the ith bomb so starting with any of the ith bomb right and then we detonate all the jth bomb that lies in the range of the ith bomb okay then further we detonate all the kth bombs that lies in the range of this jth bomb right so yeah we keep on detonating the bombs until there are some bombs in the range of the current bomb right so what thing is common in this thing the only thing that is common is we are detonating the current bomb and also we will detonate all the bombs that rise that lies in the range of current bomb got it so this thing is common here so can you see that this is repeating right this we are simply trying to detonate the current bomb as well as detonate all the bombs that lies in the range of the current bomb so since this is repeating calculation we can think of a recursion right In recursion what we will do we simply code once and use it for all calculation okay so guys since we are doing this thing this line says it all this line says everything a detonate single uh, bomb then uh, detonate all the bomb that lies in this range and further detonate so yeah if you have something like this that we are doing some of the calculation repeatedly then in that case we can surely use recursion because what is recursion recursion is nothing but performing some calculation and number of times right so guys let's take a look at the coding part here that how we will perform recursion so initially i took maximum detonated uh, that is our answer variable is 0 and n is the size of the bombs now for each bomb for each ith bomb right we can try to detonate it and calculate the answer right so let's say we have from uh, 0 up till let's say 10 bombs so total bombs are 11 so we will run this for loop for il all 11 bombs and we will try to detonate each bomb at a time so yeah uh, further i took this boolean variable detonated that will mark whether the bomb is detonated or not i uh, then the ith bomb is detonated and call this recursive function detonate so inside this recursive function i took one answer variable so and then i run a for loop right now when can we detonate a bomb so if it is not already detonated and so this is nothing but the euclidean distance this is euclidean distance so if the euclidean distance between the center of two bombs is less than the radius of the current bomb so this is nothing but x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square and if this is less than equal to radius square so this thing we are trying to check if the distance is less than equal to the radius square of the radius then only we can detonate the jth bomb right so for all of so for the ith bomb we are trying to check all the jth bomb that lies in the range okay if it is not detonated detonated and also this is nothing but inside the range so if the bomb is inside the range then what we will do we will simply detonate the jth bomb as well as try to find the answer recursively simple as it is as the question says for each ith bomb detonate the jth bomb that lies in the range now all for all the uh, bombs that lies in the jth bomb also try to detonate so yeah guys that's why we write a recursive solution and here we call we simply added to our answer one one because we have detonated one of the bomb and simply call for all the bombs that lies inside the range of j simple it is so yeah guys thinking of recursion will help you solve this question easily as we are doing same simple calculation repeatedly right this calculation will get repeated for all the bombs that lies in the range of j and yeah at the end i did simply return the answer so stored in the current answer and did 1 plus 1 why added 1 because for this ith bomb that we have detonated for that i have added 1 here 
and yeah and the answer that came from this detonate function and check for the maximum detonated value so guys this is one way to solve this question by recursively but uh, guys what else we can think of can we do something else like can we store the information about the bombs that can be detonated right so let's say if i have the ith bomb then can we store all the information that what all bombs that lies in the range of ith bomb right so for an example uh, let's say i have i have this ith bomb so can we store something like this that there are two other two other bombs that lies in the range of the ith bomb so and then there is one another bomb that lies in the range of this bomb so can we store this information that what bombs lies in the range of the ith bomb so this is nothing but we are simply creating a graph or adjacency list where adjacency list or, or the adjacent element of i represent the bombs that are in the range so here in adjacency list so in a let's see in a typical graph of i represent some elements like element 1 element 2 and element 3 so these elements are not are simply what they sim they simply have edges from uh, element element of i right they simply have edges correct in the graph adjacency list of graph this list of uh, the ith element represent all the elements that have a uh, connection or an edge so yeah we can make something like this here where we will create an edge right we will create an edge so for example let me name this this is zero mom this is one two and let's say this is three so uh, in the range of zero what all what all bombs we have we have bomb one and bomb two in the range of one what are bombs we have we have none for two we have three and for three we have none okay got it so yeah this way adjacency list we can create and yeah we can store this so uh, we don't have to calculate this again so this is one another way to solve this question so from where we store the all the bombs that are in the range of the ith bomb using the adjacency list and then what we can do is we can traverse and find maximum number of reachable bombs so So here, what we will have to do then? Then let's say if we uh, we can if we start from node zero, then how many nodes are reachable? So from zero you can reach to one, you can reach to two. From further two you can reach to three. So if you start from node zero, at max you can reach to four nodes. So that that same thing we will try to do here. We will try to traverse and find the maximum number of reachable bombs. Okay, simple it is. So uh, here we created this adjacency list and push all the bombs that are in the range of this adjacency list so yeah we run this uh, uh, inner two for loops right and simply push all the jth bomb that are in, range, in the range of the ith bomb okay so this calculation is the same as we did in this recursive solution that this calculation is the same and then we call we ran this bfs traversal okay so for all the bombs from zero to end we uh, pushed the ith bomb and then started this traversal bfs traversal so we did this bfs traversal from all for all the bombs okay so the things are simple here as we did in the recursive solution we created one uh, boolean array detonated uh, and yeah, and we, then we marked uh, it as true and false and this is the simple bfs which we took uh, the current element x and try to traverse all the element from the current element okay using the adjacency list so I guess this is one another way to solve this question. Now you might be wondering that what is the best approach? Is this BFS approach or this uh, recursive approach? So to answer that, let's discuss the time and space complexity. Now here, if you see that this for loop will take big O of n, but inside this for loop we are calling this detonate recursive fu function. So what would be the time complexity of this detonate? So here. The time complexity would be n square of this detonate recursive call by n square now let me show you so let's say uh, you try to uh, recurse for n bombs okay let's say you try to find and recurse for all n bombs and inside for each n bombs there is one for loop that we will traverse okay so that's why it's n square see you are starting from the ith bomb let's say you try to check for all the jth bomb okay and in the worst case all are all this condition is passed this condition is passed so in the worst case you will try to recursively find all the n square bombs right all the n bombs and inside this for all each n bombs you will find for all the other n bombs 
so overall the time complexity would be big of n square here and this for and that we are doing for big of n times so overall time complexity would be nothing but n into n square this is n multiplied by n square because we are using it internally so this is big of n cube time complexity and the space complexity is big of n as we are using this visited type of file that is detonated plus some recursive stack uh, this recursive function will take okay so this is the time complexity and the space complexity now let's check the time and space complexity for this solution now here this adjacent cell list will take space complexity of big of n square plus we are using this visited header here also so that will take big of n now time complexity so one thing is fixed this will take big of n square you can clearly see that there are two for loops two inner for loops and yeah we are running them both of them for n so and additionally we are doing bfs call for each node so that is nothing but big of n multiplied by uh, this bfs so for all n nodes we are trying to do bfs and here inside the bfs um, there are again two for loops right for each uh, node we traverse for all the adjacent nodes so that will also take big of n square time in the worst case so yeah overall time complexity would can be taken as n cube same as the above right same as this but we have saved some space if we don't use adjacent cell list so yeah we have saved some of the space so yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you